but it, it's due to classification is what drives you know, maybe assaults on himself or fear of uh, assault on himself, uh, his own personal behavior, his disciplinary record while incarcerated in the department. There's a number of things that feed into that, but it goes back to classification. Are there fears that other I'm not aware of that, uh, but that doesn't mean it isn't. Yeah. Are you going to get shots from the Okay, he's one more. Yeah. He wants to take off his jacket. you want to leave his blue shirt on? Or his blue shirt, yeah. His blue shirt has to stay on. Blue shirt.
half hour here for me. Why am I doing this? I have to carry the key, but I'm not really, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a, I'm not a person to interview. I don't like to play interviews, but I'm stuck under a game of in ignorance. I'm stuck under little brain people, you dig? And I have to, uh, I have to try to get around that the only way I can. The only time I can get on handcuffed is when I'm here with the media. I've been 20 years in handcuffs. If that makes any sense to to anybody in this world, you know, 20 years in handcuffs, you know, so he can play daddy, you know, to you. I mean, you know, get off that trip, you know, get up off of me. And I'm serious. I said, get up off of me. You understand what I'm saying now? I understand what you're you saying, know. and I'd like to talk about some of these things. Yeah. Are you telling me? Let's get this straight. Yeah. Are you telling me that you'll do the interview, or you? Yeah, I'll do the interview for you. And then I get a few minutes to send it to this. No problem. No problem. I figured that, you know, that would be worth something, you know. Okay. So. Do you want to sit down? Do you know that it's going to depend on, largely on what you say, Charlie, if you're going to allow it to exit the institution. What do you mean? You're going to put your importance up over somebody like you're somebody? No, you ain't no. nothing but a lot, man. Yeah. Shut up and keep your mouth shut. So you don't run anything. Okay, just let you don't run, run a damn thing. thing. You, say, you don't run a damn thing. You understand what I'm saying to you? You don't run nothing here. You know, whatever he's telling you, you know, if he's putting his importance up over you, there ain't nothing over you right now except my old lady in Florida. My old lady's over you in Florida. And that's the only thing that's over you. You take that all the way to Regan and his horse. Who is your old lady in Florida? Uh, Squeaky's in Florida right now. And they just took her from Kentucky. She, uh, she's trying to get us a trial. We didn't get a trial. We didn't get our rights. We didn't get anything. We were tried by the news media. We weren't tried by the courtroom. The courtroom just, the, the, the news media was selling it. It was making money. They was buying and selling it. And when it's making money, they're going to sell it. They don't care who's got to pay the price for it. But we had to pay the price for it, you know. Uh, I didn't break no law. Everybody in the world knows that. But it seems like these people around here, they can't get in their brains that I didn't break no law. What has Squeaky got to do with me? Because it's only one woman, girl. It's only one woman. What does that mean? That's Jesus. You're on the cross, woman. You don't even, you know, you people don't even know where you're at or what you're doing or what's going on in the world. You're saying there's one woman, is there one man? Man died in the wars. Arlington Cemetery's got all the men. Two thousand years the man's been dying. It's all a reflection of mother. Yeah. Charlie, Unless you go to Lebanon somewhere. I need to put a mic on you, is that okay? Let's go to Lebanon or go to, uh, go to uh, Babascon or go out in the jungle, you might find one, you know, but I don't think you're going to find one uh, not out in this madness, you know, you know, they're all working for you. She knows that, you know. Sure she does. Sure she knows it. She knows there's only one. It's got nothing to do with me personally. She, when I got out of jail last time, she come up and she said, uh, <coughs> can I hang around you? I told her, no, no way. She says, why? I says, every time I let you around me, I end up in jail. Put you back in jail. This was in 67? Yeah, this was in 67. You knew her before then? Uh, I knew her in dreams. Her daddy's a, a rocket scientist. He makes rockets and, and Boeing aircraft. And I met her on a street corner. She didn't have no place to stay. Her parents kicked her out, you know. And I knew what her heart was and where she was running and what she was doing because that's an old garbage can to me. I've run through that uh, before. So I told her, no way. And she said, uh, she said, I won't put you back in jail if you don't break the law. If you break the law, you put yourself back in jail. And that's true, you know. So I said, all right. So I said, you give me your word as your bond and your bond is your life. And she said, yeah, I give you my word. No, I said, okay. So she hung around for a while. And uh, the reason that there was a lot of girls around that place is because I play music. And I play pretty good music. Do you play music now? Uh, no, these jealous 
snake that's on top of me are lacking in manhood. So they don't want nobody like me to live. They do their damnedest to kill me every day they get the chance, you know. Uh, You're not allowed a guitar then? No, I'm not allowed anything. Do you miss the music? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, my, that's what I live for, music, yeah. How long has it been since you played? Uh, quite a while. They let me touch it every once in a while, but they, they, don't, they don't want me to play. It's like everybody wants the attention. I don't want the attention. I just like to play music. Why are you doing this interview, Charlie? Because I can get another roll of film and send it down to Bogus, and I owe him a little something. Is that the only reason? And that my old lady's in Miami, that she's in Florida. What, what has that got to do with it? What has she well, been... Well, she'll see this, and, and, and she'll know that I'm still where I'm at in relation to here. You mm -hmm. call Squeaky your old lady. Does that mean you have a romantic relationship no, with her? No, I don't play all that, uh, you know, that's, she's just a friend. What you would call a friend. She does what she wants, I do what I want. She's just a person. All the, they say that I was a leader in a family of people, which is bull. That's, that's bunk. I had a lot of friends because I play a lot of music. A lot of people like my music. And uh, we were all friends. There was no such thing as follower, leader. There was no leaders or followers. There was just people, intellect, intelligence. There were people, intelligent life forms. And there was a bunch of kids who were working out their problems for that particular time in that particular space. And each had to do what they felt they had to do for the problems that they were working on, which really had nothing basically to do with me. I'm not of the 60s. I'm not a generation of the 60s. The 60s were little kids to me. The Beatles were little, like punk rock is to you. That's what the Beatles was to me. They were, they, you know, that's not my era. My era was Bing Crosby. I'm 53 years old. I'm not a teeny bopper. But all the kids, they would come to me and say, we got no place to go. And I'd say, well, I got no place to go. You know, so they were throwaway kids, and I was a throwaway kid. Tell, so, me, tell me a little bit about your background. Tell me if you could describe your childhood in a couple of sentences, how would you describe it? I didn't have a childhood. Tell me a little bit more. Tell me more. I went, to, I went to a, a reform school in 43. And I've been fighting ever since. Was it as bad as you describe in the book that was co-authored by Newell Evans? Uh, that wasn't my book. That wasn't your no, book. No. But what about the parts describing your childhood and your experiences in reform uh, school? That was him writing the book. So that, the, that didn't have to do the with part me. about that school in Indiana, that's not true? Uh, you were bits and parts of it are true and bits and parts of it aren't. Give he me gets, a hint. He gets a little information from other people. And anybody that wants to tell him something, he and what he wants to believe, and what he feels will sell to the public, then that's what they'll write. Okay, well let's not talk specifically about that book then. Tell me how you would describe how bad it was for you in these reform schools. A child don't know what bad is. Well he says in the book that you were raped, that you were beaten oh, constantly. Oh, come on, man. That's not true. That's what he would like to believe. But so there ain't, no, ain't nobody can do that. So you didn't have a lousy childhood then? Yeah, I had a terrible childhood. But I'm from here. In other words, it didn't uh, get to no, you? No, I've never sold out. They've never beat me. I haven't been beaten. Tell me about your terrible childhood. The child doesn't know what terrible is. You don't want to talk about it, I tell I'm you. telling you, a child doesn't know what terrible is. Give me what a little is terrible, bit, Give me a little description of it. What is terrible? You know, terrible. What does that mean, terrible? I don't know. You you used the word, so I'm trying to get no, you to no, describe it. No, no, I didn't. He me. used the word in his book. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I'm not a sniveler. I don't cry. I don't snivel. I don't look for excuses to get off on other things. You know, I accept my position and I hold it. Let me ask you something. How do you spend your days now, since you're not allowed to play music? How do you spend your time in jail? Setting. Just sitting? Mm -hmm. Do you do anything else? Do you read? No. Do you walk? No. At one point I read somewhere that you were making dolls. Is that I true? I do. I make little dolls, yeah. Tell me about that. I just started taking string and making 
little dolls and bugs and spiders and little. Uh, it's a new art form. I created a new art form. Anything else like that? Any other things that you do in jail? And yeah, I run an underworld. You run an underworld in jail? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. <laughs> you don't see it? I fly birds. I look out for um, wildlife. I'm trying to redeem my trees. I have an organization called ATWA rolling now, trying to uh, redeem life on the planet Earth from the people that destroy it. Tell me more about that. Who's destroying the Earth and why? The things that we do as human beings that are accepted and called right a hundred years ago have changed. Years ago we could cut down trees and we could afford an exuberant lifestyle. We can't afford that no more. We're running out of atmosphere. We're running out of water. Our water's becoming so poisoned and so polluted we're not going to be able to drink it. Um, the trees are being cut down so fast. Lumber companies are just... The United States is owned by foreign corporations. Nixon opened it up for foreign trade. And when Nixon opened up for foreign trade, uh, the people of Europe and the common market in Spain and different places, they don't care about the United States forest. And in short, the United States has been sold out by people who really don't care for anything but money. I've had all the money in the world three times. I had to give it back to keep the game going. What game? The game. It's a game. Money is a game. It's only real to the people who work for it. The people that don't need to work for money, they it's, you know, it's a monopoly game. It's a, it's a game of um, paper. It's all on paper. I've got a production company, and I've got a recording company, and I've got a mansion in Beverly Hills, and I've got Rolls Royces and Ferraris. I've got everything money can buy, but it's all on paper. Everything's done through the companies and through the tax loopholes. And, and the people that live on that level, they don't care about the average honest mule that just goes back and forth to work. Uh, they don't care about the children that are in the streets that are thrown out of this upper echelon of existence. And then when all the children fall down into me on my level, I pretty much identify with them because I was a throwaway also. So it goes to the point of, do you really care? When you said... And who does care? And if anybody cares, they're considered crazy. I've been 15 years in the nut ward for trying to stop the trees from being cut down, from trying to uh, rearrange a lifestyle of a bunch of people who don't want to change. But they're going to change because the cold wind is blowing. You're going to change or there's going to be no life left on the planet Earth. And then there's a bunch of little people that are always trying to play act some s sort of importance up over the truth about what is rolling on the planet Earth now. Did you get him? Uh, yeah. Or she might use for me. Or we might use for another one of the friends. And I say old lady. Let's get back to that talk about God for a minute. Tell me once again, I don't, I don't know if we got that, what you were talking about, about being God's messenger. Tell me that again. Life is God. All life, bugs, birds, trees, everything that's alive is God. The sun is God. But we've got God over here on a cross. We've got a dying man over here on a cross, and we're all kneeling down hoping that if we die, there's a better place somewhere else. Well, you've got a whole bunch of people hoping that they die creates a hell of a big energy. And I call it a death wish. It's mother's death wish. It's what everybody's going towards dying, like the Vietnam War when they wanted to blow the world up. And what have you got to do with God once again? I'm just a messenger of the truth. God's messenger? Life's messenger. We use the word God. 
the God hooks all the other words up. I'm the Pope. I'm 10 times the Pope. I'm 50 times the Pope. But I'm the Pope in the hills and in the mountains. I'm already out of here. This enclosure here, I'm out of here. I, my body is stuck here, but my thought is already gone. When you told me you ran an underworld, is that a joke? No. No, why would it be a joke? It's not a joke. No, when your word is good, it's good. What do you mean by that? When your word is good, it's good. What, what do you mean by that you run an underworld? What do you mean by that? A little kid came to me a long time ago in McNeil Island, and he said, would you teach me how to speak English? I said, no, I won't teach you how to speak English. You're too stupid. He said, I'm not stupid. I said, come on, let's go play some handball. So I taught him how to play handball, and I taught him how to speak English, and I taught him how to tell the truth. He lives in Peru. What has that got to do with running an underworld? All I got to do is tell him anything I want him to know, and he knows I don't lie to him. Is that what you did with your so-called followers? No. No. Yes, 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 in a proportion, yeah, sure, sure. But I didn't break will. I didn't break the will. Are you saying that they didn't do anything they didn't want to do? That's it. That's it. In other words, if I'm with you, whatever you do is your business. I tell you, if you drink out of that cup, uh, you're going to get so-and-so, and you say, well, rude, rude. I say, well, that's up to you, if that's what you want. If you go ahead and do it, I mean, that's you. I don't break your will. What did your followers do? I didn't have any followers. What I had some friends. What did your friends do? They did whatever they had to do. And what was that? Whatever that was. Did any of your friends kill people? Sure. Who did they kill? They killed lots of people. Did they kill Sharon Tate and the people that night? Uh, I imagine so. If they said they did, they did. Did you tell them to? No. Let's talk about something else for a minute. Do you ever have any contact with your children? You fathered at least three children, right? I've got a whole lot of children. Do you have any contact with them? i got prisons full of children. <laughs> real children. I'm talking about real ones. They're as real as you can get. Children that you fathered, you have prisons full Every of Every child of God is a friend of mine. Charlie, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about, do I have any ego children? Biological If you children. and I have a child, and you take the child off, and you raise him to be like you, he's not like me. He's like you. Are you in contact with any of your biological children? I'm not in contact children? with anyone. Squeaky farm. I'm in contact with everyone. Mm. Are you ever in contact with your, mo your mother, your biological mother? I am my mother. Are you ever in contact with any other members of the so-called Manson family, your friends? The Manson family was a music group. The music group I had was called the Family Jams. And all the girls sang in the music group. And all the guys played in the music group. It had nothing to do with the cult. It was a music group. Whatever happened to those people? Are you in contact with them? Sure, they're all doing fine. We're all doing the same as we was doing before. You can never split us apart because we were never together. We were together in soul. We were together in truth. And every one of them knows I've never lied to them. I've never lied to anyone about them or around them. They've never seen me in a lie. Do you ever get letters from people? Yeah. Tell me about some of the letters you get from people. I get all kinds of letters from all kinds of people, all kinds of kids, all kinds of people that are lost, people that are needy. Do you write them back? Sometimes, occasionally. What do you tell them? Hello, hi, how are you? Do you give them advice? Uh, advice. It's within. Do you give them advice? If that's advice, it's within you. <laughs> that's the advice you give. It's within well, you. Well, uh, whatever advice is, I, I, uh... Does it... Do you get visits? Do you get visitors? No. Nope. Never? Are, you're not allowed visitors? Uh, I've got a lot of people standing on me trying to play important. And each one of them takes a little bit until finally I've got nothing left. And I sit in the cell, and then this dummy wants to come, and he wants to get his little bit. And this guy, he wants his little bit. And everybody's got their little bit, you dig? And then uh, uh, I'm stuck up underneath. I can't do anything because everybody else is living my life. They're representing me. If all the people that were representing me that quack in one direction, if they turned around and bowed in the other direction, I'd have every head bowed.
<laughs> because they're doing nothing but representing me. Regan's court was representing me. The court that Regan, that I was in was Regan's court, was his appointee. He was representing me. Everybody's been representing me. Let me ask you another way. I've, I've heard that you get a lot of letters and a lot of, have in the past gotten a lot of visits from kids. Just kids that you don't know. Is that true? I am kids. Have you gotten these kinds of visits sure. and letters from kids that you don't know? Sure. Why do you think these kids write you? Because I am those kids. What is it about you that they... I am a child. I never grew up. I never lived in your society. I never went to school. I never had a mother and father. I raised myself up. What do you think it is about you that makes people want to be a part of whatever it is you're a part of? I'm brand new. Everything I do is always brand new. I'm on the premise of reality. I walk a real, a, a real road. I'm a real person inside. I'm not a phony. I don't put on no airs. I say what I think. You see what I'm saying? Aren't and you I, putting on an air now? Aren't you I'm putting on, on an well, air for it, me? When you, when, you, when you look it back, see if it's an air. See if where you get it. And someone sees it and goes by and they say, hey, how you doing? I say, pretty good. How you be? Where does it come from? Where does the energy and power come from? Who recharges your battery? You know what I'm talking about. Isn't this an act right now? What isn't an act? What isn't an act? So Look you put yourself. on acts. Are you an act? Sure, so are you. Well, all right, then. So we're all an act, well, right? Well, what isn't? The only thing that isn't an act is when someone gets killed. And then it is, it, it, it isn't an act because people's fear sees it as being real. So the only thing people see as real is fear. So if the people in the underworld are knocking people down in the streets and breaking their jaws, maybe it's the people in the underworld that want you to see that I am very real and I am on this planet Earth and I am moving for Atwa, my air, my water, my trees and my wildlife in every way I know how, in every way I can. Does the end justify the means? The end, there is no end. There is no beginning. Not in that one. There's does, only redeeming life upon the planet Earth. Does that goal justify any means? I don't justify or not justify. I lay it out there. What people do with it, it's their business. If they decide to run up and kill Sharon Tate, that's on them. Had, had, had you let us put on a defense, we could have explained to you why it happened. Why did it happen? All right, you take um, 20 years, 250 district attorneys, 5,000 policemen, uh, everything the news media has got, you put it on one person, and then you come to me and say, explain it away. How can I explain away all the misconcepts in two, three minutes or five, ten minutes? Give me a trial in a courtroom. Give me my rights in a courtroom, and then I'll explain it. I can't explain it just in a few words or in a letter or in a postcard. It's too vast. It's too big. It's circled the world three times. What are you asking for, a new trial? I'm, I'm new. I haven't got the first one yet. You're asking for a trial, I'm, I'm Just a trial. Just give me my rights. All I want is the same rights that my father's died for. The same rights that says United States of America. I see Reagan getting up in the, in the United Nations telling the world how human rights are so important and how we should give all the humans rights. And then he turned around and asked him on the darker side, what about Charlie? He said, oh, well, he don't deserve no rights. Well, if I don't deserve no rights, then who does deserve rights? I didn't break no law. Right now you're coming up for parole. You have the right to come up before a parole board. Do you want to get out on parole? Parole for what? Parole to where? I want my rights. My rights, uh, you give me a parole every other day, it doesn't give me my rights. If I don't have any rights, he doesn't have any rights. He doesn't have any rights, and you don't have any rights. I think if, I think I know what you're saying. Yeah, in other words, if everybody gets equal rights, you got equal rights to the rights I got. 
And that's to sit down and keep your mouth shut or get your jaw broken. Is that the right you want? Do you want to get out of jail? Out of jail? I've been out of jail since 67. I got out of prison in 1967. Would you like to get out of prison? I'd like to get my guitar and I'd like to see my friends. What would you do if you got out of prison? Depends on what level I got on. What would you do if you got out of prison on parole? Oh, on parole? I don't, I don't know whether I would accept a parole. Because if I accept a parole, then I have to accept a whole bunch of little people play act importance with my life. I'm tired of other people running my life. Are you saying that you don't want to accept guilt? Guilt? What the hell is that? I can do anything I want, woman. What would you do if you got out of prison? I'm out of prison. I get out every day. I get out in these guys every day. <laughs> I get out all over. I'm everywhere. I know you're going to lock everywhere up. <laughs> I'm everywhere, man. I'm all things. How are you going to lock it up? How do you feel about blacks? Blacks are all right. How do you feel about Jews? Jews are all right. How do you feel about women? Women, okay. Why do you wear the sign of the American Nazi Party? Uh, that's my Nazi Party. That's me. What does it mean? It means I've been locked up in here since 1943 that I'm standing behind the judges in Nuremberg. I think I need a little more explanation than that. Uh, there's a line that the judge sets on. There's a premise of crime that the Supreme Court sets on, that the government and the crosses set on. Uh, I have been behind the judge since 1943 in the infinite consciousness of those black robes. I have been on the dark side of the world you people live in for uh, 43 years, for a little over 43 years. <coughs> Juvenile halls, Cook County Jail, Chicago, Indianapolis, D.C., Virginia, I did a lot of time in Virginia, all over the, all over the country. I've been in, in and out of jail. I have nothing against no one unless they got something against me. You come up and say hi. I say hi. You say I like you. I say well I like you. You say well I don't like you. I say well I don't like you. In other words, however you reflect to me is what I'm going to reflect back to you. I don't care what color you are, where you're from, or what you're doing, what race you are. I am me first, and that is Scotch. I'm from Scotland first. That's me. And I look out for that, number one, me. Just like everybody else does. Do you, Charlie, do you resent the fact that you've been in jail practically all your life? And if so, why did you continue to do things that put you in jail? Mm -hmm. Split the question, ask one at a time. I can't answer two questions. Do you resent the fact that you've been in jail practically all of your no. life? No, I don't know what resent is. That's a waste of mental energy. It's a waste of time. Do you feel it's wrong? Right or wrong, I don't judge. That's what they got guys in robes for. They judge. Well, I guess then I can't really ask the second part of the question. Well, what's the second part of the question? Well, the second part of the question is, if you resent it, then why did you keep doing things to get it back into jail? Why did you do so many things to get yourself thrown in jail? You seemed to like <coughs> it when you were out, according to what I read. Well, because I'm stupid. I really am stupid. I'm a lot. D I'm smart in some things, but other things I'm dumb in. You know. Um, probably, if you notice, people that tell the truth generally act like they're kind of retarded. Mentally retarded people. I can communicate with real good. And these and dumb people, man, we talk like crazy. You know. In other words, I'm all right with those. And kids, I'm okay with. But when you get grown up, then there's a lot of problems. I get. I, I don't get along too good with grown ups, and uh, they get me in trouble. People get me in trouble because I don't have the mental capacity to adjust to the outside. And when I get out there, I'm like a little kid. I'm like a little baby in a lot of respects, you know. 
uh, that's why Squeaky has fought so hard to get me out, because she knows I didn't break the law. She knows I was used by a lot of different people doing a lot of different things, and that I didn't break the law. What would you do if you got out of prison? What would I do? Probably play some music, get my guitar, and go back out in the desert. I got some trees. I was planting some trees. I got some trees. I, I did a crazy thing. I planted some fig trees, and I didn't know fig trees take two trees. Did you know that? That there's fi male and female trees? I didn't know that. I was planting fig trees, and every water hole I'd go and plant one tree. And I figured one fig tree at this water hole would be just right for the water hole. But then I come to the gym, I looked in the book and find out, man, you got to have two fig trees to have fruit. So I got a whole bunch of water holes out there with one fig tree planted. So I wanted to get back out and, and, and put the, uh, plant the other side of that, put the other trees out. I like working in the dirt. I like uh, farm work. I like uh, growing things. I like growing things gardens and things like that. I like uh, earth things, earth things I like. I'd probably, uh, probably get back down on the ground, walk around, just walk around, do the things that everybody does, nothing, just sit around under a tree, probably, probably do uh, not much, not much. How would you support yourself? Support myself? See, then, see, in other words, like, your lifestyle has got you thinking crazy, you know, you know. You support yourself. I got figs over here. I got raisins over there. I got pine nuts over there. I got pockets full of everything you can eat, you know. <laughs> I got all I can eat, and where I'm laying down is where I'm sleeping. So, I mean, I support myself. How does a deer support itself? Every time they've let you out of prison before, you've turned to stealing. Oh, now I'm stealing. You got me in for stealing. I thought I was in here for something else. I didn't know I was in here for stealing. You got me stealing, too? <laughs> How do you put everything else on me at least three times? What did I steal? Have you never stolen anything? Sure, I stole a whole lot when I was a kid and thought that was cool. I thought that was cool when I was youngster. I lived by the code of the outlaw. I give everything I got and take anything I want. Do you think you've changed? No, got a little older probably. Changed? I don't know, changed. I, you know. How does the universe change? Don't right. you think people change when they get older? When they get older? I don't know get older. See, all those things that you got in your mind, they, they don't exist to me. Get older, get younger. I was born a thousand. See, we're born old and young. Yeah, I was born. At the born, same time. I was born to... Don't be offended. I'm a nasty old man. And I'm mad. But I put my anger in the, in, in the right direction. The direction of Atwa. For 20 years we've tried to find intelligent life forms on the, in the United States of America, but there didn't seem to be any there. <laughs> it was all bought and paid for. These guys that sell themselves for that paycheck, they don't exist outside that paycheck. Why are you mad? I'm mad at people taking my life. Putting you in prison? No, taking my life. What do you mean? Well, when you're cutting the trees down, you're taking my life. When you're polluting the water, you're taking my life. Laughing. <laughs> you do it on command. Uh, your justice system ain't working too cool. You know, so I imagine that there'll be another one, Phoenix, in behind, uh, doing what's right. All we're trying to do is do what's right. But doing what's right in a world full of people that don't know what right is, it's difficult because you got so many interpretations and so many different people in different directions. You've got a thousand Jesuses. You've got a million devils, you've got 25,000 Napoleons, you've got every kind of insanity going in the world coming. And Atwa, Atwa also means at war, if you put an R on the end of it. it at means war with what? Pollution. Pollution. A revolution against pollution. So you're telling me all these people think that you hate the blacks and you hate the Jews and you kill people and all you're really trying to do is stop pollution? 
all the time has been the same thing. Whatever people put on me is what they're trying to play themselves on their level. Tell me once again, I didn't quite get it, why the American Nazi Party signed on your forehead? When those eight people were killed in Uganda, when, that's, when that plane was skyjacked, and Idi Amin was put in, in the position to rule Africa, uh, I was in that episode. And that's the only way I could save my head. Because there was a lot of, a lot of violence, a lot of fear, a lot of bloodshed was going on in those days and times for to stop the drought that was coming over there. We seen the world. Don't you remember when the Lord went and knows when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around? Well, we were all in that thought, trying to change the world, you know? And you can't say, you can't say, well, the Jews are the children, chosen children of God, and these Germans are no good because their forefathers uh, uh, fought. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the Germans are no worse than the Jews. And the blacks are no worse than the Mexicans. And the Mexicans are no worse than the Filipinos. And the Filipinos are no worse than the Chinese. So how do you reach a one with that whole circle? How do you reach a one with that whole circle? How do you have peace on this earth? You can't have peace on this earth unless you let Second World War die. You want to keep the Second World War going? You want to keep selling and buying Germans and dead Indians on TV every day? You know, that's got to stop. The Second World War's got to stop. And it's got to stop in the Jews. The Jews won't let the Second World War stop. They keep the Second World War going. They keep it going. They keep it going. They keep perpetuating it because they're making money. As soon as the Second World War was over, they never stopped the brainwash. The brainwash that they were selling the American public was making money. You see what I'm saying? They were making money. They're not going to stop making money. If the combination's there to make money, they're going to keep selling it. They'll sell it all the way till I'm in the cell with a guy named Millman, Jerry Millman. And he's got pictures of Hitler and Japanese and things all that. I said, boy, Hitler must have been a hell of a guy. He said, Hitler was terrible. I hate him. I hate him. I said, why do you hate him? He said, I'm a Jew. I said, well, why do you enshrine this guy? Is he your daddy? And he looked up to his mother's fear. And his mother's fear was Hitler. <laughs> Hitler was like his father figure. He loved Hitler, but he hated Hitler. He needed Hitler to hold him up. Because Hitler was holding his hate up. Because without his hate, he didn't exist. He didn't have no reason to live unless he had some hate. He didn't have any reason to buy and sell unless the money held him up. If you took the money away from him, you took the hate away from him, he'd be gone. So how do you, how do you, how do you communicate to a whole group of people? You stand up and you take the worst fear symbol there is and say, there, now I've got your fear. Now I've got your fear. And your fear is your power and your power is your control. I'm your king of this whole planet. I'm going to rule this whole world through Atwa. I want my trees put back. I want my water clean. I want my atmosphere cleaned up. What you do beyond that, I don't care what church you go to or what race you are, what color you are, what booby gobble blah, 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 and all that, all that nickel and dime personal important trash head stuff. I don't care about that. All I care about is my air, my water, my trees, and my wildlife. And you humans, if you don't get in line with that, goodbye. Because I got biology and I got chemistry. And I got things beyond the nuclear mine. I won't blow it up. I checkmated that. I got all the bombs over here in the corner. I said, no, I'm not blowing it up. Now the next step of dealing with you suicidal maniacs that won't get up off my life, my air, my water, my trees, my wildlife, my fish. You see, I live on the earth. God gave me a life on that earth. And I live there. And everybody that's taken my life off the earth is taking yours off the earth also. It's taking your your, uh, uh, because you don't have any more right than I do. I don't care whether you're black, whether you're green. If I don't have any rights, then you don't have any rights. And what you do to me will be done to you. Charlie, mm -hmm. people have said that you have powers, that you can make people do what you want them to do. Well, sure. Sure. That's true? Why, well, certainly. How so? By making them do what I want them to do. How do you do it? These two guys here with that stick. He has power with that stick to make me do what, what he tells me to do. So what's your stick? What's your stick? I've been under that stick 43 years. How do you make people do what you want them I to do? I just turn that around and give it back to you. 
what you put on me with that, I just take that and throw it back at you. Are you saying that you used violence to make people do what you no, wanted them to no, do? No, I don't, I don't deal in violence. I'm it, not a violent person. My, 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 my record's been, I've been on record, uh, all my life's been on record, and I'm not violent. I learned that whatever you put out, you get back. And I don't like to be hurt, so I'm not going to hurt anyone. All this stuff about Charles Manson, the guru, the person that people follow, is that true? Sure. Why? Why did they follow because you? Because I'm in the soul. I'm in the fist. What does that mean? The fist, the family of the infinite soul. The eyes are the windows of the soul. When I show you something once, you know it's there. You've seen it. It's in your soul. It becomes a part of you. Do you still have people who write to you, who visit you if they can, who follow you? Every, the whole world's following me. There's no place else they can go. What do you tell I haven't found no place to run. <laughs> and I'm following the next guy in front of me. Everybody's following someone. Do you believe that you have powers to... No more than any other man. No all, more than any other man. All, well, I, all men have powers. Some people know it, some people don't. Some people understand the power they have, and other people don't understand the power they have. What is it about you that made all these young people come to you, that made them follow the, you? The music. Just the music. <laughs> I sing like that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of put you on center, huh? Well, it's loud. Yeah, I sing loud. I sing real loud. It grabs your attention. It does. It does. It kind of reaches in there and breaks all the pattern in your brain. See, you, your music is, uh, is Barry Manilow <laughs> and all them ooh, pa, pa, and they sing it to little girls for, for a dollar and a quarter. I'm singing up for God rolls. I'm singing up in the top echelons of the music. Have you always sung like that? No, no, no. I got, uh, I've become, I started a rebirth movement in 67. Everybody else stole it. Carter stole it. Everybody said, oh, this is us. They locked me up and said, oh, this is us. We represent that. You know, I'm important on that. And maybe, and then they'll want to make their little decision. And then they'll say, let me get in there. Because everybody wants in there first. You know how that goes. Do you ever think about Sharon Tate and the people that were killed that night? No, not that much. But everybody said, oh, this is us. They locked me up and said, oh, this is us. We represent that. You know, I'm important on that. And maybe, and then they'll want to make their little decision. And then they'll say, let me get in there. Because everybody wants in there first. You know how that goes. Do you ever think about Sharon Tate and the people that were killed that night? No, not that much. Why should I? A lot of people get killed. People get killed all over the world every day. Do you feel any responsibility for what happened that night? None. feel no remorse for what happened that Remor night. How am I going to feel remorse? What am I supposed to feel remorse about? Everyone says, you feel no remorse. I said, can't you understand I'm not guilty of anything? And they said, well, you're supposed to feel remorse. I'm supposed to feel remorse because you don't understand, because you're twisted in your brain. You know, in other words, someone comes in and says, you were in New York City last night. You said, no, I wasn't. And they said, well, don't you feel bad about it? You said, feel bad about what? You said, that people that happened in New York City. Man, I wasn't in New York City. I wasn't there. I was in San Diego in bed with some broad I'd met in Big Sur. I didn't have no family. I had a motorcycle, a sleeping bag, and a guitar guy. I just got out of the penitentiary. I hadn't been out of jail long enough to, to uh, they say, well, you got our kids to do this, and our kids. You had your kids to do that. Your kids were doing that before I got out of the penitentiary. I just got out of jail. Can't you understand that? You know, you tell the people something, and they've got their minds made up a certain way. You dig what I'm saying? And you tell them something, and they just don't know. What am I supposed to feel remorse about? Do you feel remorse that every day of my life you've tormented me with these idiots that you've got holding me down? That you beat me and knocked my jaw out? You forced me medication. You've drugged me. You've drugged me up down hallways. You've hit my head on every chopping block in the state of California. You've poisoned me. You've done everything. I've puked blood for months and days, man. You've done everything you could do to get me killed. And then you turn around and ask me, do I have any remorse? 
if I have the right to do to you what you've been doing to me, then that gives me the right to do anything I want to, anyone I want to do it to. Can you see now? Well, you better give me my rights. Because as you're doing this to me, you're doing this to all these children and they're all these cells and they're growing up just like you're raising them up with no rights. And even the guys in the uniforms are looking at it and saying, what am I doing this for? Why am I cheating this guy? He's got no money. Why don't I go up the hill and take the money away? You know, if, I give, if you give DuPont the same right you give me, you can put DuPont in the cell and take everything he's got. Take his children, rape his women, drag him up and down the highway. Everything's okay when it comes to doing it to Charlie. And Charlie's been carrying it. And Charlie knows in the background that when the wave comes in, the wave goes out. And each time the wave comes in, the wave goes out. And you're all going to get the reflection in the mirror that you put in this child here. And it's got nothing to do with me helping you. Because I, I'm gone from you people, man. I'm out in the desert. I'm doing what I'm doing. The only people I would be helping, I'll help Squeaky. And I put my life up to protect her, even though I know she's the devil. <laughs> I'd help Blue. I'd help Green. And I'd help Yellow, and I would help all the girls that got busted with me because they know me in the thought of this. All the guys in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would not have told you so. And it's just as true then as it is true now, as it will be true forever and ever and ever. I don't care what the Christians say. Jesus Christ is a reality. So you feel loyalty to certain people, people who you feel have stood by you. Sure, the people that tell me the truth, I'm, I'm bond to tell them the truth back. The people that have treated me right, I am bond to treat them right back. The people that have not treated me right, the Holy Ghost will deal with that. Why do you say squeaky from is the devil? Because all women are. They have to be to survive. Men aren't. Sure, men are too. Sure, we, we, we have both. We hold both balances. Women are worse? I would say, yeah. <laughs> I would say, well, well, if you get Mama Lion, it's very vicious. The Queen of England has never lost a war. A woman is, is, woman has the power. A woman sends these guys to work every day. A woman puts it on the road. She has the will plus the supermarket. I have the reality of numbers, and I have the fishing pole. I have other things, but see, the games that you guys play with your woman and man thing, we don't play that man-woman thing. You, know? you guys are all hung up in them soap operas, they're killing themselves over crazy things that really, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean anything. When, when you peek the peak and you touch the ultimate, then you walk with the ultimate in your soul forever, man. You know, and you can't put a personality on that. You can't say, well, I'll now pronounce you man and wife, you know, and all that thing that was somewhere else because the rebirth movement that I started, don't go back and pick up the same old shit. Excuse my French. You don't go back and pick up the same old trash can. You start all over. And starting all over means starting all over. And when you start all over, it's a constant rebirth thing. And it's not going back to Sunday school or with Swagger or Baker or the Pope or the rope soap. That's all dead. That's all old game. That's all graveyard game. You know that Jesus was a reality. He died so I could live. I'm not going to miss out on that. I'm getting up on that train too. That doesn't mean that I live by a bunch of foolish rules that a bunch of old people are left by old people that left by old people that... Because let me run something to you. What it took Jesus Christ 2,000 years to do in thought, in word, in deed, you can do now with television in two or three months. You, you see what I'm saying? And what the Constitution and the people that founded this country in 1776 did, you know, like the government's got nine Supreme Court justices for 20 million people in, in the 1800s. Man, you got 250 million people. That's like a fat woman, 500 pounds, trying to get into a size 10 dress. The government's not working. 
The system is not working, and they won't admit it. They think building more prisons is, going to, is the solution. Building more prisons just adds more confusion to the problem that's already at hand. You know? Charlie, what would you do if you wanted to... Is there anything at all that you would change about your life? Yeah, I would have planted them other trees. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just as stupid as anybody else. I'm no smarter than anybody. I'm no better than anybody. <laughs> but nobody's better than me either. You know, uh, you could ask that question to yourself, I guess, you know. I don't, I don't have any, any regrets. I don't, you know, it's foolish to regret and think about something that, it doesn't change, nothing, you know, you can't change anything anyway. I mean, how are you going to change yesterday? Yesterday's gone. You let it go, man. You don't hang on to it and drag it down the road in a sack, you know. I mean, uh, that's part of changing the lifestyle. What about Helter Skelter? That's the district attorney's illusion. That's his trick. That's a reflection of his fear, his sex paranoia, all the games that... But he won that reality for you guys. When he said, I verse the people versus the people that he represented, he won Helter Skelter as a reality for those people. But that's got nothing to do with me. Helter Skelter was a nightclub in the desert. That's where I run a poker game and I shoot dice. And I make money and I ride around in do buggies. It's funny, they say, you're going to the desert. I said, I was going to the desert? I said, L.A.'s in the middle of the desert. What's wrong with you, dummy? You say, you were going to the desert? How can I be going to where I'm, I'm in a conspiracy to go to where I'm standing? You know, it doesn't make any sense, man. I mean, it makes sense to you people. Helter Skelter is a simple, uh, just confusion. That's been happening. Let me run something to you. You go to jail, the music's going, da ba da da you go to jail. It stops. And you're in jail 10 or 15 years. You get back out and the music going. And you go to jail again. And everything stops. And you get back out. You go to jail again. You come back out and they go. And you say, wow. People are going crazy out there, man. Your minds, I don't know how, how, you, how your brains can keep up with all that, you know. Gee whiz, man, you know. So it's the same thing with your dancing and, and your walking back and forth and your living of your every ordinary life. And I see why your children are all committing suicide and going crazy, man, because, she, how you, you know, because you're running in a crazy world. You got a crazy life going on out there, you know. So you ask me if I want to get back out in that? I haven't been able to get to the penitentiary yet. I've been 18 years trying to get to jail. I was in the penitentiary and I got out and I come back and I haven't been able to find the penitentiary yet. You know, the penitentiary seems to have gone. They moved it somewhere. And this is another thing. Isn't it funny that while you would get Amnesty International to take millions of dollars from the United States to help prisoners out of jail in other countries, when you got political prisoners right here in the United States that you're overlooking, that you won't accept? You got people all over this country that are in here for political reasons. But you want to make us criminals and crime and say we're all crooks.